I am Benjamin Franklin by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Benjamin Franklin from Ordinary People Change the World by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Benjamin Franklin. I come from a big family in Boston, a really big one. I was the youngest boy with ten older siblings and two younger sisters. That's a lot of people in a small house. Tell them how small. It only had two rooms. As a kid, I loved swimming so much I tried to figure out how to swim faster. First, I studied the problem. Hmm. The bigger your hands and feet are, the more water you can push. Then I started to experiment. I made two big mitts that had holes for my thumbs. Also made a set for my feet. Look at him go! My next swimming experiment was with a kite. You really think you can learn something from a kite? Do you want to break it to him or should I? Once we got the kite into the air, I ran into the nearby pond. Almost there! Floating on my back, I waited for it to pull me across the water. Almost there! It's working! Meet me on the other side and bring my shoes! The kid's good with kites. If you're willing to experiment, you can learn something new and use it to improve things. At 10 years old, I got my first job, working for my dad, making candles and soap. It was hard work, really dull too. Hoping to find something I liked, my dad showed me many different jobs. That's a tailor who works on clothes. That's a baker who works with food. And that's a blacksmith, right? Yep, works with metal. I liked seeing all the ways to make things. The world has so much to discover. But there was one thing I liked most of all. Reading books. I loved reading so much that any time I had extra money, I'd use it to buy books. At 12 years old, one of my favorite books was one was this one, Plutarch's Lives. It taught me that our individual actions could change history and make the world better. That means history doesn't just happen by itself. It's written and built and improved upon by people like you and me. Since I loved reading and writing, I went to work for my brother James. He owned one of the most powerful tools in the world, a newspaper. My brother's was the first independent paper in Boston. Back then, America was ruled by the King of England, George III. But the King didn't control our newspaper, which meant that if he was being unfair, my brother could write a story about it. It's called a free press. I wrote that no leader should have infinite power. I wanted to be a writer too, but my brother wouldn't let me. So one night, when I was 16, I wrote an essay and slipped it under the door of the newspaper. I used different handwriting and a fake name, pretending I was an old woman who lived in the countryside. Mrs. Silence Do-Good? I've never heard of her. But wow, can she write! Let's print it! That's how I became a published author. Eventually, I decided to forge my own path. To write my own history, I headed for the big city. Philadelphia, my new home. On the day I arrived, I saw a girl, Deborah, in front of a house. Eventually, we'll get married. Well, what? I came to Philadelphia for a better job and a better life. I found both. But the number one thing I worked to improve? Myself. In order to be a better person, I wrote new rules to live by, my very own plan for future conduct. First, we be frugal, which means don't spend your money on things you don't need. 
Second, tell the truth. Third, work hard. Fourth, don't speak badly about other people. To sharpen my mind, I even started my own club, the Gento Club. We discuss the great questions of the day, like, How do you achieve happiness? Why do those beads of sweat appear on a cold mug? If a government takes away the rights of its citizens, is it okay to fight back? Why do I feel like that's going to be a very important question? My most vital work came from my job. In Philadelphia, I opened a print shop for my very own newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette. I was a champion of the free press, printing many different opinions. People will always have disagreements. That's not a bad thing. Remember, if you listen to just one side of an argument, you won't have all the important facts. You won't be able to make an informed decision. Early on, Ben printed this image, the very first political cartoon. Its meaning was that we're much stronger when we stand together. Every year, in addition to the newspaper, I also published Poor Richard's Almanac. An almanac is like a calendar containing weather forecasts and the times that the sun will rise and set. I also added advice like, Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Haste makes waste. God helps them that help themselves. He that lies down with dogs shall rise up with fleas. No gains without pains. He really wrote all of these? He'll never say it, but at the time, he was probably America's best writer. My real goal was to help my readers be better people. If you want to improve the world, you need to start with yourself. Over time, I made a newer and bigger list of virtues to follow in life. Thirteen in total, including sincerity, which is meaning what you say, justice, which means treating people fairly, and humility, which means not bragging. I tried mastering them all at once, but it was impossible. Instead, I experimented. Every week, I focused on just one virtue. I'm a messy person, so this week I'm focusing on cleanliness. Next week will be moderation. None of us is perfect, but we can all keep working to make ourselves better. Temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, humility. Throughout it all, I never lost my love of learning and discovery. I observed how people got sick and became one of the first to figure out that colds are contagious. Achoo! I knew it! I did experiments to prove how dark colors absorb more heat than light ones. See? The snow under the dark ones melts more quickly. My theories of how storms move was the start of people predicting the weather. Thar she blows! And let's not forget my most famous scientific experiment. Electricity. Back then, people didn't know how exactly electricity worked. By observing it up close, I discovered that when there's a positive charge or energy of one type, there's also an equal negative charge or energy that holds the opposite. It was a massive scientific breakthrough. The words he invented like charge and battery are still being used today. I also noticed that terrible fires were being caused when the tops of church steeples got struck by lightning. There had to be a way to make things safer. First, I studied the problem. I think it's the metal on the roof. I think the metal is drawing the lightning from the sky. You sure about that? Let the experiment be made! At the time, I had been waiting for a local church to finish building its steeple so we could put a metal rod up and test it. They were taking so long that my son and I decided to try it ourselves, with a kite. In June 1752, on a cloudy night, we put a pointy wire at the top of a silk kite. Then we tied a key to the kite's wet string, 
hoping it would show us sparks after the lightning hit the wire. Almost there. People think I was an old man by then, but I was only 46 and my son was 21. Almost there. When the clouds first passed over, nothing happened. Give it time. Almost there. Almost there. And then... Look at the string! The strands started to rise. And the key! It worked! Instead of hitting and burning the kite, the lightning was attracted to the metal. Soon after, the world's very first lightning rods were installed in Philadelphia. To this day, rods around the world have prevented millions of fires. Of all my experiments, perhaps the most important one was this, the American experiment. Back then, the United States didn't exist yet. There were no states, just 13 colonies, all controlled by King George III, who was treating us unfairly. We shouldn't be ruled by a king. We should be our own country and make our own rules. In 1775, the American Revolution was beginning. I was elected to the Second Continental Congress, where we voted for 13 colonies to join together and fight as one against the king. Over 20 years after he first published it, this cartoon became a symbol for the country to stand together for freedom. George Washington, John Hancock, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams. Thomas Jefferson was selected to write a document that would declare our independence from England. In it, we'd tell the king what kind of country we hoped to be. People who lived here would have a certain rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Jefferson asked me to read his first draft. I made a number of changes, including this one. We hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable. What if we changed it to this? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Through history, it has always been true. Nothing can stop a good idea. In my life, I worked hard to improve things, including improving myself. That doesn't come easy. When you're trying to improve things, there will always be a risk of failure. Don't let it stop you. By learning from failures, you will make progress. New ideas are like lightning. They can appear instantly, striking from nowhere with staggering power. That power is yours. Use it wisely. And you'll change the world. Can you believe all of his inventions? The lightning rod, bifocals, a mechanical arm for getting books off high shelves, and so many more. Did you know that he also helped start a fire brigade, a corps of night watchmen, his own college, and the very first subscription library? He was the only person to work on and sign the four major documents he helped establish the United States. The Declaration of Independence, the Treaty with France, the Treaty of Paris with Britain, and the Constitution. But no matter how famous he became, he continued to sign his name B. Franklin Printer. We're responsible for ourselves and each other. Good people can do a lot individually, but it's nothing compared to what we can do together. I was a printer, a writer, an inventor, a scientist, a scholar, and a founding father. You don't have to be just one thing but you do need to be a good person. You can always improve yourself. You can always improve your world. There are countless ways to do it. Look for problems that need solving. Experiment and find solutions. Help the community and help the people in your community. And of course, use your voice. Speak up and speak the truth. I am Benjamin Franklin. Improve yourself. Improve the world. Nikola Tesla, Edith Clark, Michael Faraday, Louis Latimer, Thomas Edison. Tell me, and I forget. Teach me, and I remember. Involve me, and I learn. Benjamin Franklin. Timeline. 
January 17, 1706, born in Boston. 1722, writes Mrs. Silence Do Good Letters. 1723, arrives in Philadelphia. 1728, opens own print shop. 1729, becomes publisher of the Pennsylvania Gazette. 1730, marries Deborah Reed. 1732, publishes Poor Richard's Almanac. 1737, becomes postmaster of Philadelphia. June 1752, experiments with light, with kite and lightning. 1754, publishes Join or Die cartoon. 1775, elected to Second Continental Congress. 1776, helps write the Declaration of Independence. 1787, becomes president of Pennsylvania Society for Promoting the Abolition of Slavery. April 17, 1790, dies in Philadelphia from pleurisy. 1928, becomes the face on the U.S. $100 bill. Top left, University of Pennsylvania, statue of Benjamin Franklin on a park bench. Top right, John Trumbull's painting, Declaration of Independence, at Yale University Art Gallery. Bottom, one of the faces of American currency, Benjamin Franklin on the $100 bill.